here at Aero, one of the airplanes that has been attracting a great deal of interest. People literally crawling all over it and around it and in it. It's the shock, and it's from Savage. And here to tell me all about it is Bill Canino from Sport Air USA, who represents the Savage line from from Italy. So tell me more about this, Bill. Well, Dan, good morning. It's really the Outback with the shock options. For the past year, <coughs> pardon me, I've been working with the company to develop some improvements to give us better performance and more balanced handling. So we have a new, entirely new wing. It's a super cub form with about six inch additional cord and you can't do just a new wing because of aerodynamic balance so we have a new tail and then that caused us to look well let's look at our gear maybe we should increase that so we came up with what we call the shock options which are exterior linear shocks on the outside of the airframe they're another great company doing that just aircraft and we think it's a good idea for really uh, off airfield uh, operations uh, we still have the standard 3-inch forward, 3-inch additional uh, landing gear uh, on the Outback, but the shock options really make it a performing airplane. All of them come with a 180 horsepower engine. Even uh, the shock options include the slats, which are made in the USA. They're carbon fiber slats in three tiers so that you don't have just the single wing operating at one time. One operation occurs as the airflow over the wing changes. So it's a very balanced method of using the slats so that the pilot doesn't get any reverse impact from the wing. We're real pleased The pilot with does not have to do anything to make the slats work, is that correct? Uh, it's my kind of operation. I'm not even aware of it. You want it to work so that you don't have to do any input. You may be busy at the time and let that wing do what it's really doing. We had uh, one, our t first test aircraft, actually, which is this aircraft, hovered for... This one here is the test aircraft? Hovered this looks for, like a really finished uh, aircraft. Uh, excuse me, Bill. it's the first flight of this aircraft. We were testing low speed operation. We hovered in a 15 knot headwind for eight minutes with no engine overcooling. So the, the wing is really performing well. Wow. Oh, and that was without flaps. And no flaps, and no you were flaps. able to hover in a how much wind 15 again? 15 knot headwind. Wow, that's pretty remarkable. So, yeah. as long as you mentioned that, Bill, tell me a few of the specs about uh, cruise, stall, climb, Cru like that. Cruiser unaffected. We, we may have a penalty of about one mile an hour for the slats. The slats are an option. Uh, for cross country, they're not necessary, but for off field operations, it's just one more balance to the center point of the lift of the wing. So, we we also, they are removable. Uh, the slats are removable. Yeah, the, you can order them after the fact, and they are removable with eight bolts. They come off in three sections, and you could store them until you need them. And then you would have a higher cruise speed, I presume? Yes. It, it wouldn't well, be a lot different, I'm guessing. No, we, we really, the calculations show it's within one mile an hour, or one knot, okay. but we measure everything in miles an hour, so I don't know until I... We always take what we get from the manufacturer and we get a bunch of people out to the runway and we'll do multiple takeoffs, multiple landings until we have data that we can post on our website and in our brochures and then we'll say on an average pilot day, which is my day, you can get these numbers. We'll have those as soon as I can get this into the U.S. We have four aircraft pre-ordered at this time. Now, they've been operating it with the Rotax engine previously, is that correct? Yes, and it's an option, but uh, all of our aircraft are pre-configured with 180 horsepower. For the type. U.S. market? Yes. But in the European market, they'll supply Rotax primarily? Uh, Rotax uh, primarily. Uh, in the U.S., it's secondarily. If you want the 100 horse Rotax, or in the future, the 915 engine, that'd be great. It'd yeah, be that'd, really be, yeah that'd be an interesting option on this as well, but certainly 180 horsepower on that big Titan will put you right in league with yeah, what I like the other guys the doing that kind of thing. Is that we've had great support from them. They are, you have 180 horsepower when you want it, and maybe 60 horsepower when you don't need it, just for groups. So it's a good combination. Do you think it's good that Continental is representing that engine these days? Is that helpful to the I, brand? I did have some initial concerns. I talked to Oliver, who is the manager for that area. And what's happened is that Continental has allowed Titan to have a deeper pocket for additional research. It turns out that uh, funding for this was uh, increased because the 340 engine is really their most popular uh, model. It's the one that's going out the door. So they they ha they concentrated initially on the 360 as Titan, but with Continental it's the 340. 
is the the airplane comes with other options on the inside, such as carbon floorboards, new carbon seats with leather uh, exterior padding, and an improved headroom area. Some we're beginning to wonder if we get aggressive with our off-field operations. We're beginning to recommend the use of helmets, uh, such as what's happening in, in Alaska. Sure. And so. The whole headroom area has been increased so that you have room to maneuver and look around even if you have headgear. Yeah, I see a lot of room above uh, the gentleman that's in the airplane right now who doesn't know he's our model, so I hope he accepts. Oh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll send him <laughs> he's got a lot of room uh, up there above his head, so he could easily wear a helmet with uh, full communication on it and everything and, and not be bumping his head. Yes, and of course a new instrument panel to go along with with the interior. And what uh, avionics are you using in the aircraft? Uh, generally we're installing all the Garmin G3X, but Dynon is available. All of the, we're an aviatics installer, we'll install whatever the owner really likes that fits his personality. But Garmin or Dynon is the, the dominant player here. We also represent other manufacturers who are quite good. But that's what the market has dictated to us, and that's what we reply to our customers. Sure. Now, you're located in Little Rock, Arkansas, correct? Yes, sir. And that's where you can do some of these installations of alternative Yes, we're an avionics FAA, and so FAA forth. FAA repairman, a repair station, and an FAA 145 avionics installation. So we're able to do this the professional way, meeting all of the requirements for, for good, true avionics. Now, you have to have the permission of the manufacturer to make some of those changes on an SLSA. Uh, your work with Pascale, is that uh, they're already, solid to they're let you do that? They're already listed and approved on our uh, master equipment list. Okay, so, and that makes you part of their program in a very direct way. So Exactly. We are an extension of their quality control program in the U.S. Okay, very good. Bill, that's a lot of great information about this very handsome airplane. Tell us how we find you on the web so that we can get even more and perhaps place an order. Very simple. Look at savage.aero, A-E-R-O. All right, great. You can find lots more about all the Savage line, everything from Sport Air USA, which is quite a catalog. You can find that and lots more affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining Bill Canino and myself here at Arrow. Bye, Dan Johnson.